there are some lies in our science books. Taught it for 15 years. Even though I'm not teaching it anymore, I still like to study. It's so many neat things to learn. And we're going to cover some of that tonight. Perception is being managed. We are being steered and guided by a hidden hand. The whole world has been duped by the media that is not real. <laughs> smart thinking, possible time traveler, smart thinking. That night, boom, contact memory. And then, do, Alex, if you don't agree, you'll be sent to a re-education camp. Just because I'm old doesn't mean I've lost my touch with the ladies. Experts are suggesting that we're in a golden age of shape-shifting reptilian sightings. Now, why is that? I was, and still am, a huge conspiracy guy. I literally ran out of new tin hat topics to research. It was most definitely not capable of melting steel. Then I would be a crackpot if I thought that was that was the, the case. Thought that was that was the, the case. Welcome to the Hypothetical Institute, a podcast about conspiracies. My name is Luke. I'm Salty. I'm Cam. I noticed the first thing you did there. Luke was getting right up on your I know, I leaned in. Well. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean back a little bit. Trump style. Trump style. I had to get him a new mic. Yeah. Too looks, much spit in there. Loves to lean in. <laughs> what sort of mic does Trump have? Well, if he's they've changed it, then he's fucking broken decades of presidential... Didn't, didn't we decide he's kept the same mics, but he's kept... The different setup. Oh, yeah. He has like a gigantic foam thing on it now, yeah, right? Yeah. I think he still has the same the SM57s. Is that what we have? That's what the one Cam used to use was. Oh, okay. So we've got 58s. 58s. We're one better than Donald Trump. That's one way to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to think we're many better than Donald Trump, but you know. I mean, he is the president of the United States. Yeah, but he's also Donald Trump. Mm, fair point. Good political commentary. Yep. Fucking nailed into the wall right there. <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about Mark Taylor. Yes. Again, a little bit more though. Like yep. the legendary Australian cricketer. <laughs> yep. Also sells a mean air conditioner. Yep. How's your Fujitsu, Mark? <laughs> Pretty cool. That is what we're talking about though, right? Is it? The cricketer? That's, uh, what, I did on, I that's hope, what I did on my own. I hope you managed to find conspiracies about that. <laughs> no, we're going to be talking about uh, Mark Taylor, the Trump prophet. Also known as the fireman prophet. Mm. Yeah. What did he come up last week saying? Uh, uh, that uh, they'd changed the frequency that things were tuned to so that uh, people wouldn't believe, that changed the DNA so people wouldn't believe in Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah okay. So we'll, well be discussing him a little bit more. Yeah, um, safe to say he's pretty cooked. And we're also going to talk about Lyme disease, yeah, which is a fun one. Before we get into this, yeah, do we want to remind our listeners that they can sign up to our delicious, delicious Patreon? We will. Yes. Patreon.com slash Hypothepod, I believe. Yes. Yep. Join the uh, the few who have already signed up. Four. Four. Getting some sweet, sweet stuff over there. Uh, we've already had f- positive feedback on our first uh, new Patreon-only episode. Cool. Where we, so what we're doing is, uh, instead of doing our regular catch-ups, we're going to do them on the Patreon-only feed. So that'll be recorded on the same day. But yeah, you'll still get the meat, the, the chunky bits. Yeah. But if you want a little bit extra, you can sign up for $3.33, or you can sign up for $6.66. Or thirty three dollars. Mm. It's got its own little theme song. Yep. Uh, it's pretty pretty great. Yeah, Toe Hutter original, I believe. Yes. Yep. Don't sign up to the Toe Hutter Patreon. No, <laughs> <laughs> they've had their time. Um, do and, though. And to those, do go, do go check it out. <laughs> and to those that have signed up already, thank you. Yeah. yeah, thanks guys. You've exceeded our expectations already. All right. Hopefully, none of them are chronic Lyme disease sufferers. <laughs> <laughs> Lyme disease. All right. There was this. Let's start with like the normal conspiracies, and then let's get into the cook stuff. Even though I feel like some of the cook stuff might be. I feel like I got multi pilled here. Yeah, I'm pretty Lyme disease pilled right now. I got pilled on the normal stuff, and I've gotten a little bit pilled on the cook stuff. Yep, fair. All right, so Lyme disease. There's. I feel like there's two sort of levels to the normal Lyme disease conspiracy. Uh, there's like the nor- the main conspiracy, but there's also like an Australian yes. variant. So Lyme disease is a 
disease that you get from being bitten by a tick. Yep. Do you have the scientific name for it? Andy, oh, Bor- 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 Borrelia. Borrelia. The, the bacteria is Borrelia that you get infected with. Mm. And so I think that those ticks are called Borrelia ticks. Yeah, or deer ticks. Mm. I believe it first started around Connecticut, the town of Lyme, maybe? Uh, Old Lyme yeah. is the town. Um, and yeah. As of the time of recording, there were stories just today and yesterday that it has now spread to all 50 states of the saw United that. States of America. Right. So it wasn't so much it was first recorded there, it was more, I think, it was first identified as a particular thing after an outbreak. Yeah. Um, but so, yeah, so that's why it's called Lyme disease, named after the town Lyme. But basically, you get bitten by a tick. Yep. Uh, there's a telltale bullseye rash that you get on your mm. back. Mm. And there are other symptoms, which might include Robbo. Uh, you get chron- chronic fatigue, yep. aching and swelling in your joints. Uh, salty? There's three phases, actually. Ooh, all right. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's Dr. Salt. Yeah. So the first, the first stage is apparently you get it, you go, oh, shit. Easily treated with penicillin, mm. but often not treated mm. because it takes a while for the the really shitty symptoms to kick in. Second stage. And, you know, it's the US. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You might, you're not going to the doctor. Oh, I've got a little bit of a rash. Yeah. Stage two, which apparently happens one to several months later, uh, can include neurological effects, meningitis, encephalitis, cranial neurosis, which presents itself as facial palsy mm. like when people get a stroke and stuff and they lose all the muscle function in their face and some cardiac problems can start presenting themselves and then stage three which comes along several months and it said several months to years later so it is like a thing that really sits in you and and sort of festers away yeah chronic arthritis increased neurological and cardiac issues come along um and then there's obviously the people who that that's the identified three phases, but then there's the sort of I think it was referred to as the Lyme disease counterculture, mm. who are the people who are all about getting it out there, getting awareness of it out there. That talk about that it's actually much longer lasting. So after people have the treatment, mm. the symptoms can persist, and it can lead to people getting sort of severe depression about their symptoms, and um, you know suffering. And trauma because of that, and they can at least to suicide and things like that. So this is called chronic Lyme disease. Yeah, and this is so this is the first sort of level of the conspiracy. There's this idea that the medical fraternity uh, doesn't recognise chronic Lyme disease. Only a certain, like a few doctors, and a bunch of sufferers mm. of something think that there's this chronic Lyme disease. There's also there's post Lyme disease syndrome. Yeah. Which is when they continue to feel the symptoms after the, the treatment. The treatment, yeah. That's I think that's the medical establishment's name for what is also called chronic Lyme disease by these other people. Yeah. I think there was... The, I read something by an Australian doctor talking... I'm going to get to the Australian side of things anyway, but saying that a lot of people that get misdiagnosed with it go through these really heavy-duty uh, courses of antibiotics hmm. that actually aren't doing anything because they don't have Lyme disease. Yeah. And at the end of it, they just feel worse because yep. they've just fucked their body up with antibiotics for yeah. three months. But they also haven't treated whatever... Yeah, but with. they still have what was wrong with them the first time yeah. <laughs> at the start. So the, one of the problems with Lyme disease, I think, is the symptoms are pretty hard to spot as a collective mm. and they could be symptoms of so many other things. Yeah. Um, as in, you know, aching joints, a rash, whatever, tiredness. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that frequently gets misdiagnosed or missed, but then the flip side of that is people then get paranoid about it mm. and say, oh, they're not diagnosing my Lyme disease. Yeah. Um, which, you know, the misdiagnosis is, is definitely a, a massive problem. Happened yeah. to Avril Lavigne, uh, yeah. former topic on the show. Mm-hmm. And do you think that's because people are relying too much on Google to diagnose themselves? I, th- I thought you were going to say, do you think that's because that's why she died? She yeah. died of Lyme disease <laughs> and they replaced her, yeah. Um, no, I think it's like doctors, like it's, it's quite rare. It's not super common. Like and so if someone comes with a rash or aching joint, it's like, I don't know, you maybe a bit run down, change your diet. Like Lyme disease isn't at the top of their, their list of those things. Yeah. Um, and then that, yeah, it can last for a lot longer that way. I, the thing about this conspiracy is I don't 
think that it's, you know, if you do a sneaky qui bono, a little bit of a followage of the money. Mm. I don't know if uh, Big Pharma is famous for like turning down an opportunity to make money. Yeah. Like if there was a epidemic of chronic, like this chronic illness out there, I'm not sure they'd be like, all right, everybody, here's your pens. Everyone got your, your free pens? You got your tote bags? Yep. All right. <laughs> like, there's no such thing, guys. Yeah. That's the line. <laughs> no, but this is the one we're not going to make any money out of. Because the, we're big pharma, we are evil. The flip side to that, though, is if... Not that it was the disease existed, but who caused it? Mm. Would that be a reason to downplay it? Well, we'll get to that stuff later, but I don't think that... Uh, Makes sense either. Okay. Let's talk about the Australian side of things. So there, are, there's a bit of a thing in Australia with Lyme disease that it, there's quite a few people that think they have it. Yeah. And the official line of the Australian medical fraternity is that there's no Lyme disease in Australia at all. The tick doesn't exist in Australia. Mm. Um, there's no way you can contact, contract it. doesn't exist. So the thing is that it's... Not passed from human to human. So even if someone contracts it overseas, they can't then... It's not a thing where it can then be spread. Mm. Can I just interject there? Mm. I did read in 2004, a study found the Borrelia bacteria present in the sex secretions of males and females. Right. So they are sort of considering that it may be sexually transmitted. Whoa. Okay. Should I say sexual secretions again, but in a creepier think, way? Oh, I think it's about right. Yeah, I think yeah, you, I yeah think got, got, got it one. one. Got it. Yeah, okay, yep. cool. So, yeah, it could very well be. But let's keep going. But, yeah, that's the line of the medical fraternity in Australia is that uh, it can't be transmitted from human to human. Mm. So, and I mean, the ticks, once you've got the tick, the tick burrows into you. It's not like ticks are, like, jumping on your clothing and... yeah. Coming with you on a trip. Yeah. That's not where they live. Yeah. They live under your skin. Yeah. So that does lead... I, I watched some docos with like Australian Lyme disease sufferers or Lyme-like diseases as I think the government's mm. term for it. Yeah, but, so the medical fraternity say it does, doesn't exist in Australia, but there are some tick diseases mm. that they're not really sure if they de- identified yet, yeah. Yeah. but they're not Lyme disease. As a collective group, do they call themselves Limeys? <laughs> <laughs> These people are very sick. <laughs> this is... <laughs> Jesus. What was really frustrating about this is like I watched one of them where it was this person who had been on holiday in Thailand mm. and they'd been, they thought they'd been bitten by a tick and they came home and they had the bullseye rash and then their face, you know, half of their face was paralysed. And they had a video of themselves talking with their half of their face paralyzed. And this was like a thing that like happened when they got back, but also would happen like intermittently mm. over time. And I was like, oh, I don't think you're faking that. Like I tried to like do it. Yeah. And I was like, nah, you can't do like these things if. Like, yeah. What about a trip to the dentist? Yeah, maybe. But <laughs> a lot of people go to Thailand for dental work. Roboing me up here. Yep. <laughs> no, but you wouldn't. You wouldn't. You have your face might be a bit slack after the dentist. It's not when you get back home. Yeah, mm. but you know, she had ongoing work. Anyway, sorry. Her teeth looked bloody lovely. That's why. But exactly. here's the thing, right? She was in Thailand where the tick does exist. Yeah. But she couldn't get treatment in Australia because they say Lyme disease isn't here. Yeah, so they're not prepped for it. Yeah. Mm. And they don't really like doctors aren't really told to check for it or anything. Yeah, but. When people like come to them and say, "Oh, I think I might have Lyme disease," they say, "You definitely don't." Yeah, and so she couldn't get the treatment, and it's like, "Well, can we not even countenance the idea that she might have caught it overseas?" Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there was kind of a famous case in Australia as well, somewhat famous. A uh, rugby league player got it, and he basically it ruined his career. Um, and he was sick, and he couldn't work out why. And then they kind of realised it might be Lyme disease. He has no memory of, of getting bitten by a tick. Um, the only place I think he'd been where it could have happened was Russia like six years ago for a um, uh, like a rugby league tournament, like a schoolboy rugby league tournament, but doesn't even remember being near ticks there or anything. 
Um, and then they worked out it was Lyme disease after, you know, no diagnosis in Australia. And it yeah. takes such a little thing, though, too. Yeah. Well, that, do they burrow in? I think they sit on the, the top, don't they? But they're yeah. small. They do get under the skin, though. Yeah, yeah. But you need to, like, so when you get one, you need to pull it off in a certain way. Here's a little, well. Oh, here we go. Just before anyone starts pulling ticks out of their skin. A certain way. Here's a, yeah, all right. <laughs> Here's a little Lyme, uh, well, a little tick advice. Yep. Uh, freeze, don't squeeze. Get like a wart remover thing. Oh, yeah. To kill it. Yeah. Like, you know, those things that are really cold. Mm, yeah. You use on warts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do that. Mm. So it doesn't like get infected. Nice. When you I think if you do it, it the wrong way, doesn't it? The heads come off. Yeah, it leaves it in there and you're yeah. mm. just making a worse problem oh, for yourself. Tick head in you. Oh, God. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this guy ended up having to go overseas. Uh, I think. I think it took him maybe like five or six years to really get back. Right. He's, I think he's back playing rugby league now. But yeah, it kind of basically ruined his career. So I read a thing, the thing I was referring to earlier was by a doctor, uh, Dr. Brad McKay, who was, you know, <laughs> what's the word I'm looking for? Well-respected medical practitioner, Brad McKay, also host of Embarrassing Bodies Down Under. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wanted to tra- transition into a reality TV career. Yeah. So he talked about Lyme disease. He said Lyme disease is real, mm. but there's no scientific proof that it's occurring in Australia. Mm. So he talks in this article about how he had a patient come to him and say, I've got Lyme disease because, you know, I Googled it, went to the doctors, doctors didn't couldn't diagnose it. They couldn't diagnose anything, blah, blah, blah. So she ended up sending, I think... Blood samples to the US, spending thousands of dollars to get it analysed over there, hmm. and the the diagnosis come back as Lyme disease. But he went on to talk about how people often say we don't get it diagnosed in Australia because we don't have the deep enough testing hmm. to be able to find it. Hmm. But he kind of he kind of made the the point that he it's actually that in America they don't. They're not thorough enough. Yeah. And quite often they'll go, here's the symptoms. There's a couple of markers in the blood. Lyme disease. Yeah. Where it's like, I think we're we're probably more thorough here in that maybe she didn't have that. Maybe when the doctors in America got it because they see it all the time, it's easy for them to make a throwaway diagnosis of Lyme disease. Yeah. But she's one of those people who went through the course of intense antibiotics and at the end, wasn't didn't it didn't help her. She yeah. just felt just as shit or worse. So I read about that one first when I was reading about the Australian ones, mm. and it was kind of my impression that the person that she got to do all the tests and stuff ripped her off. Right. I don't know. If, it wasn't didn't say that explicitly, but like it cost her so much money, didn't work, gave her a misdiagnosis. I got the sense that people were preying on people because there is that whole misdiagnosis cloud. Right. To then not just uh, that it costs a lot of money for medical treatment in America. No, I think like it's, people are seeing that as a way to make money off people that are right. at their wit's end. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's probably Lyme disease, and they look up and they see all this controversy about it. Yeah. Give me some money. So one thing I noticed when I was looking at stories of people who had Lyme-like symptoms mm. was there was a lot of like different diagnoses that were getting thrown around, and a lot of things that were like I know from house. Watching a lot of house. Yep. So, you know, I'm basically a doctor myself. Definitely. Yeah. A lot of lupus getting thrown around okay. as an alternative diagnosis. But yep. a lot of those things where it's like, oh, what would explain every symptom? Oh, just this really vague disease. Yeah. It's Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, maybe I feel like Lyme disease is one of those ones where it's like, oh, well, you've got a bunch of symptoms. It's probably Lyme disease in the States. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing, one of the Australian case I saw was a lady who got it, um, and I think, I don't know if it was confirmed, but then she went overseas for treatment and got treated, but then her baby, her daughter got it. Yeah. I'm like, oh, now I just don't trust you. Yeah. Like, that seems way too coincidental for, where is she living with all these Lyme bloody ticks? Yeah, one, one thing I saw in, like, the pro-Lyme Australia stuff is the criticism that the idea that it's not present in Australia is based on like old research. Yeah. Mm. So it was, I don't know if there's been a lot of up-to-date research. There was recently a big Senate inquiry mm. into all of this uh, where it seems like there's a lot of people out there who are suffering 
if not Lyme disease, then some sort of mystery illness. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Or various mystery illnesses. Do- and doctors were saying, oh, it's not Lyme disease, but you've been bitten by a tick and you've got a disease. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay, that doesn't solve the problem. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, you've been bitten by a tick, you've got a disease, and the problem is we just, there's not been enough research done into these other yeah. tick diseases. It's like, well... Surely... Is there a white coat shortage? Is there some reason we can't get onto this? I, th- I think there might be, so... But, yeah. Do we want to talk about... Just do, use an apron. Do we think it's... Do we think it's present in Australia before we move on? What do we, what's your take on it? I feel like there are people in Australia that have definitely had it who haven't gone on the treatment mm. they needed, but maybe they did contract it overseas. Yeah. But then because I feel like, yeah, it seems like there's an actual problem. Yeah. Where it's dismissed too easily, just yeah. as maybe in the States it's accepted too easily. Yeah. But yeah, it seems like from the fact that there had to be a Senate inquiry into it, I mean, I know there's dumb Senate inquiries into things. <laughs> yeah. It seems like there are people, that, there were people talking to the Senate inquiry about the fact that they go to the doctor and the doctor doesn't believe that there's anything wrong with them. Mm. Now, on the other hand, I did see some people saying, oh, Lyme disease, it's uh, linked to my Morgellons. Yeah. <laughs> We've yeah. discussed the famously fictional disease. Well, that's that's the kind of what I was seeing online is there is that element of Morgellons with some people. Mm. They can't diagnose me of everything. I'm seeing all these people saying the same. They're all saying it's Lyme disease. I'm now throwing my, my what do you call that? Your kitten with that lot. Yeah. Sure, yeah. <laughs> as you famously say, yeah. chucking my kitten in with the lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, do we want to talk about the US? Or we've got more Australian stuff. Well, I think that might be it. Yeah, I yeah. got a, I got a little bit lime pilled. I think I would have thought if it was present in ticks in Australia, mm. it would be much. It would be there'd be no point in them saying that it wasn't. Yeah. I'm sure people in Australia probably have Lyme disease that they've contracted overseas or somehow. Mm. But yeah, I wouldn't... If they say that there's no... It's not present in ticks here, I'd say that's probably about right. Mm. Mm. Same as rabies. That's what big tick wants you to think. Yeah, I know, right? It's salty working for big tick. Work for big rabies too. There's no <laughs> rabies in Australia, is there? I don't think so. I don't know. I didn't research rabies this time around. I think I remember, always remember that as a kid. Couldn't get. I remember watching Cujo. Yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> watch Cujo, and then I found out there's no rabies in Australia, and I was like, "Fucking hey, doggos, yeah. what's going on? <laughs> Suck at your dogs. <laughs> You're gonna give me <laughs> rabies. Like, Fucking, a, would be a tricky one to like bring across. Why? How does rabies transmit? Through, well, through well, rabid dogs I've, only? Yeah, rabid St. Bernard's. Yeah. Well, no, but if a, a person can get rabies, I yeah. forgot he was a St. Bernard. Yeah. What a lovable breed to like turn into a Fucking monster. Psycho. And they're big dogs. Yeah. Well, do, doesn't rabies just make you super thirsty and like remove your capacity for logic? So yeah. you're like, oh, I'll have a drink out of that bloke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think also for an animal to contract rabies and make it over here in a shipping container or something, it would be dead long before it got here from rabies. Yeah. yeah. No, it's not, not going to get past bloody Border Force. Yeah. What well, no, Border Force would be like, what's this bat? What's this bat in your luggage? <laughs> but I think if a person had rabies, they would also be presenting with two, two extreme symptoms to get through the uh, yeah. Transport Security Administration. Let's stick to Lyme disease for the moment. Yeah. yeah. But I think the same thing. Like, it's probably harder for... Would be harder for that to get over, right? Because they fumigate shit for ticks and bugs and yeah, yeah. Now, lime, the town. Yep, just the town ac- that bears its name, mm. just across the water from Plum Island. Plum Island sounds nice. It sounds yeah. bloody like lovely. A yeah. Little holiday spot. Probably some plum groves. Yeah. Do they grow plums in groves? I imagine you, know, you could build you an could, orchard. You could grow a grove of plums. Here's the thing about Plum Island. Put them in the freezer box. Yes, they were testing biological weapons at Plum Island. Yeah. yeah. Yes, they were trying to work out if they could weaponize animal diseases. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, it's an island. There's no way that any animal could get from Plum Island to nearby. Yeah, just over lime. there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to nearby Lyme. Nine miles, I think, was the distance. Yeah, yeah. it's not very far. I yep. read a thing where like, you know, like no animals could get over there. And someone's like, what about birds? 
Like, oh, uh, well, oh uh, yeah. One of the one of the features of Plum Island is that no birds. No, lots of birds. They're quite unique in its um, in its wildlife because it hasn't really been touched because they have locked it down secretly so they can do secret experiments yeah. in the lab there. Uh, so right now, um, present day, people want it to be opened up again so people can go check out the birds because it hasn't changed uh, for, for right. centuries. Uh, but last century, lots of biological testing. Yes. Which is why it's still closed. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's under the control now of like the Department of Homeland Security or something. It's, I think so, it's yeah. Pretty the, the current status is they're talking about selling it to private uh, buyers to a nice spot. It's yeah. a, a coastal environment. Could I make a pitch? Yeah. yeah. What if you burnt everything on it and yeah. then replant the, it? The, then you defeat the purpose of <laughs> selling it to some shady Germans. Yeah. <laughs> so, do we want to get into what happened there other than biological? So, well, one of the lead scientists on the project that happened on Plum Island was Eric Traub. He wasn't a lead scientist. He was he a, was a, a frequent consultant. Yeah. Was offered the lead job. Yeah, turned it down. Yeah, because he's like, oh, this will be too suspicious. Uh, he was a German scientist who was brought over as part of Operation Paperclip. Yeah, which mm-hmm. we've discussed before, which was the project to uh, utilize the knowledge of Nazi scientists and other Nazis, mm. lots of different types of Nazis. Mm. Yeah, just just general Nazis. Yeah, no, well, this Nazis is, with skills. Yeah. And it was to stop the Russians getting them. Yeah. If we don't get them, the Russians are going to get them and we can't have the Russians getting them. But also, the Nazis spent a lot of time and money trying to weaponize biological things. Yeah, they did. A, well, they were spending a lot of time and money doing a lot of things. Yeah, so it's like, well, we don't need to work out how to probably do that ourselves. Yeah. So and who, also, who do we get? Were the Nazis the most ethical? Were they maybe pushing a few lines that we didn't push? Yeah. There's no reason for that to go to waste yeah, or yeah. even worse to go into Uncle Joseph's bloody pocket of tricks. We need someone who's going to get shit done. Yep. <laughs> get the Nazis. Yeah. Get bloody Straub over. So Traub. Traub. Yep. Uh, was a German veterinarian, a scientist and a virologist who specialised in foot and mouth disease, Rinderpest and also Newcastle disease. He worked directly for Himmler, one of the head bloody... Nazis, head of the SS. Yeah, I don't know much about Nazis as a as their ranks go. I know that Himmler, high, yeah, very yeah, high. Yeah, Himmler, Goebbels, those kind of guys. Yeah, the big names. Yeah, the big Pre- Nazi names. Right under Hitler. Yeah, yeah. He actually did live in the states briefly before the war. Yes, where he uh, was a member of like the local Nazi, <laughs> like the American Nazi group before. Yeah. You know, being a Nazi was a, so, as unfashionable as it became. Yes. Uh, I think he stayed at Camp Rothschild. <laughs> Just some sort of camp where you hang out with Nazis. <laughs> so you can see how we got Lyme disease built. <laughs> Carry on. Anyway, they brought, they bring him over for Operation Paperclip. They're like, oh, can you consult yeah. on some stuff at Plum Island? And what happened? Well... This book came out, Michael Carroll wrote it, uh, early 2000s, called, uh, I think it's called 257, about the main laboratory there. Yeah. So it, or officially, no Lyme disease, no ticks were ever worked on, nothing like that was ever worked on it, yeah. um, on Plum Island. But apparently, Michael Carroll, who didn't seem to be discredited at all, yeah, had a lot of people saying, like on record saying, yeah, we had um, a lot of texts released there by this German guy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, I, we just all referred to him as the Nazi scientist. Um, and then apparently in the, the archives of, uh, I think, Department of Defence, he found uh, two folders, one labelled Tick Research, yep. the other labelled E. Traub, uh, both of them empty. T- tick Research, do not open. Oh, yeah. they, they needed to put that on. They were empty. Yep. <laughs> two empty ones. Um I don't know much about this Michael Carroll fella. Take the folder. It all seems very convenient. If you're covering up your Nazi ticks, <laughs> yeah, just yeah. take the whole folder, don't yeah, leave yeah. Nazi ticks in the folder empty. Yeah. Um, some people said, look, just probably a bit of fiction, probably a bit of speculation, but they did uncover the fact that they were doing some pretty shady biological weapons testing. And he, was, he was actually there. Yeah, yeah, he was there, yeah. 
Um, so they were doing like foot and mouth disease and trying to weaponize that was the official line. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess the, like the idea would be that they were experimenting on ticks yep. and some ticks got out. My pill is if you're like some Nazi scientist and they're like, ah, oh, we bloody lost the war, but in a German accent. Yeah. Wouldn't you be like, when they bring you over to muck around with ticks, mm. wouldn't you release some ticks? <laughs> Yeah, when maybe. You put one in your pocket, release it over in line. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe. Like, oh, edit this out if you don't. If is he still alive? He's dead, right? Yeah, he's yeah. dead. So I don't have to worry about defaming him. I don't like. I don't want to have a go at this Nazi. <laughs> but <laughs> is it possible this Nazi might have been secretly a bit of a bad guy? It's entirely possible. Um, That's my theory anyway Judging on the record of the Nazis in general <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they weren't He's probably not a good fella <laughs> Yeah um, So, do you want to get some Do you want to hear some facts about Lyme disease then? Yeah Sure The facts are not going to help unpill you by the way <laughs> No um, So, 95% of cases in America mm-hmm. Are all uh, from 14 states Yep They're basically the states that surround Plum Island Yep. <laughs> if you watch um, the official like disease spread maps, you like I think they put um, you know each couple of years they'll put like these are the cases of where it's been found. The spread literally radiates from that part of America out. <laughs> um, the first um, so it was first identified I think in the eighties uh, as the the Borrella DNA. They kind of isolated the DNA that was causing it. Um, called Lyme disease based on the first cases they identified as all being the same, which was old Lyme. Um, however, they have worked out that um, Otzi the Iceman, who's a 5,300 year old mummy, yeah, had I did see that. Yeah. Um, the, the Borella uh, in him. So he had Lyme disease, according mm. to his jet DNA, as whatever, the Where DNA was sequence. Iceman kept? Um, he was in. I don't know. I didn't wasn't in bloody Antarctica, was he? Uh, <laughs> Italy. Italy? Yeah, Austria yeah, right. Italy. That's even more handy for the Nazis. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but it's also been found in... Um, so it did start in Germany, actually. The, Come on. <laughs> now you've pilled me. Yeah. <laughs> God damn um, it. <laughs> and then they found a, a mouse in Cape Cod um, that died in 1894. That They've managed to... Oh, it must have been a museum or some shit. And then that... Had it, so it had been present for a long time. Yeah, but it wasn't ident- identified until the eighties. Yeah, when right, it got weaponized, right by the place where they were trying to weaponize. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, yeah, ninety five percent of cases are mm. around that place. the The one thing I guess that would might unpeel me on that is if people were traveling by ocean to that. To America from Europe, yeah. they're landing in that part of America as well. Right. So you're more likely to get it, uh, you know, Boston, New York. That's where people are landing, and it started in Europe. So yeah. if it's always been around, then naturally that's where it's going to come from Europe to from yeah Europe to America. Yeah. Um, could just be a coincidence. I don't know if people didn't really know it existed. Why would they be even looking at it? Mm. See, maybe it was one of those. In- <coughs> Fuck. <coughs> Fuck, someone just energy weaponed me into not saying what I was going to say. <coughs> um, oh, now they're playing with my dick. Um, so, if. Fuck. Yeah, he's been energy weaponed. It's <laughs> a great callback. <laughs> so, um, it might have been something that was around, but not necessarily widely spread, like a disease that. You know, was known of. Yeah. Maybe in the bloody annals of history a little bit. Yeah. Or like, you know, not not that widespread. Yeah. But it only takes one Nazi scientist to get a strain <laughs> of it in but, a little thing, uh, pop it in the old coat pocket. Paperclip. Yep. One <laughs> ticket, please. <laughs> hey, America, you want to weaponize something? Get a load of this. Yeah. I... I'm not convinced, but I'm not not convinced. Uh, it's fair enough. We should always, you know, give Nazis the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Don't, don't, look make, this, don't fucking, make this be a pro-Nazi guy. Look at Sky News over here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, the facts are they were trying to weaponize things 
on Plum Island. Yeah. There were Nazi scientists on Plum Island specifically there to try and weaponize things. Yeah. I did read a thing saying, why would America want to weaponize something that just affects mostly Americans? Because then they can make it affect other people. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, but like, plus also, how if you want to control the population, just make yeah. them all have sore knees and feel like shit all the time. <laughs> no one's going to fight back. Yeah, that makes sense. But also, yeah, my idea that it was a secret anti-American Nazi yeah. thing makes sense for that as well. Hmm. There's lots of, there are lots of explanations for why uh, you would do release something that only affects Americans. You think the Nazis put that into motion before they got hammered, and that's why it's only how it is now. It could have been much worse. Mm. Oh yeah, maybe Lyme disease. I just many wanted, many layers. I just wanted to point out one other guy that I found, whose name was Doctor Eric Beef. Did you come across this guy? No. Dr. Eric Beef is a Swedish GP who treats chronic Lyme disease, who is also a massive 9-11 conspiracy guy. Okay. He, is he my hop or light hop? Uh, well, he... There's a quote here. The media have been very effective in imprinting the almost successful Psy War operation in our collective mind, despite massive scientific evidence of foul play. The big media is still trying to push down the Ministry of Truth narrative with all their might. Um, he set up a bunch of like protests and neon lights in windows playing 9-11 truther movies. <laughs> um, but the, um, there's a group called the, the chronic Lyme organization time for Lyme yep. in Europe. I think they must be a little bit cooked because this guy was like, talking at their events and they're all like, yes, the yeah. fucking dude telling the truth is finally at our events. I think that's what clouds this whole thing is, is the same with the Australian thing. People latch onto it. Yeah. And like, oh, this is a huge conspiracy. Yeah. But then it might be. I guess the, the thing that put Lyme disease on the radar for me is I saw someone like referring to like – those crazy Lyme people. Like, they referred to them so dismissively. Mm. I saw it on some convo on Twitter. And in the context of that conversation, I couldn't tell if they were mate saying that Lyme disease wasn't real or they were saying it was real. Mm. Like, I couldn't tell. But just the way they were saying it, it was like they were putting them in the same category as, like, an anti-vaxxer. Yeah, Which yeah. I don't think is right. I think there probably are people that... I think there's well, there's probably heaps of crossover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, oh, I don't know. I feel like there's probably genuinely sick people out there... Yeah. ...who have got some sort of disease that has not been diagnosed. Yeah. And it might be Lyme disease, but maybe not. But maybe you don't need to throw them in with someone who's, like, probably killing children. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <sighs> well, this one's throwing me for a loop. Yeah. Should we come back and talk some... Shall we come back a bit and talk about something a little bit more lighthearted? Yeah, what the end of the world. All right, let's talk about Mark Taylor. Yep, Tubby, Tubby Taylor, <laughs> <laughs> the fireman prophet, not the cricketer, not the cricketer. All right, I'm out. <laughs> uh, so Mark Taylor, he's come up twice. He came up ages ago. And I, I remembered after we recorded this last show, I was like, oh, I, I've actually done some research on him before. Uh, and he came up last week talking about sound Frequency. waves. Yeah. Yes, yeah. We already established this in the first yeah. segment, didn't we? Um, Basically, he's a dude that he's getting a lot of attention. Uh, he had a prophecy that Donald Trump would be president. Yep. God spoke to him yep. and said, this fella, Donald Trump, going to be president, 2012. Because he was watching TV, right? Yeah. In 2011. Yeah. Donald Trump was on the TV. Yep. Now, was Donald Trump on TV on like The Apprentice? Or was this when Donald Trump was going around very early on being like, I'm going to run for president? I think it might have been that time. Right. right. Um, so Donald Trump's on TV talking about how he's going to run for president. Yeah. 
This and guy makes a 50 50 guess. Yep. <laughs> well, not 50 50. There's other, like, he wasn't the direct opponent. Right. But yeah, he heard a voice in his head that was not his own thinky voice. Mm-hmm. He's like, it's not the voice I normally hear telling me stupid things. Yeah. It was a different voice entirely. It said, that man is the next president. Uh, so he said about writing a prophecy. Yeah. He wrote it down. One year later, there was an election. The prophecy completely failed to come true. And that is when he dropped it entirely. Correct? Uh, End of episode. If you want to find us, you can find <laughs> us at twitter.com slash hypothabot. Well, not quite. Because 2015, Donald Trump's getting a bloody bit of steam up. Decides to run for president again. Wins. Yeah. Beats Hillary. Prophecy comes true. Well, sort of. Comes true... Except for the fact of any dates. Yeah, yeah. But now he's been thrust into the limelight as the uh, the Trump prophet. So some woman found him. We call him, him the Trump prophet. The Trump prophet, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was a, some like a Christian network woman found him, right? I think so, yeah. What's her name? Mm, not sure. I watch a lot of Christian networky people. Yeah. Um, I don't know who I want. I don't know this one though. But yeah, someone who's plugged into all those sort of grifter... Yeah, networks found him and yes, yeah, started shopping the book around. And it's become quite a big thing. It's being made into a movie to be released this year on October. Did you watch the trailer? I sure did. It looked really bad. It looked like a pornography was about to break out at any moment. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, yeah, really bad. At one thought, one point, I thought a doctor was doing a to camera, like, "Hey, this is what he believed in, and this is the word of God." Uh, then I realised he was acting. Yeah. He was actually supposed to be talking to someone that was in the room. and Yeah, it was really awkward. I like that they didn't make any effort to cast someone who looked like him. Yeah, yeah he's a weird looking old dude. <laughs> cast kind of a young... I guess he's younger when he made the prophecy. Yeah, um, he was like five years younger. Yeah. He was about 20 years younger. I think um, the f- film's been a bit controversial because I think it's a university... It was made at a university. Yeah, but I think it's a Christian university. Yeah, but like all... It's, Liberty University? Yeah, yeah. But like all of the actors are students. Yeah. Except for the guy that plays him who's like the head of the theatre department. Yeah. Gave himself the plum role. Um, so he's made a lot of... He keeps on making prophecies. Um, one that I found... Oh, this was kind of proving that uh, he, he is a prophet. Was He was told... For some reason, he was watching the race, uh, the horse Secretariat, yep. which is a famous racehorse. Uh, you might know him from Bojack Horseman. Oh, yeah. Uh, famous racehorse who won. Or from him being a very famous racehorse. Do, people, do people know two famous... Two places uh, you might know him from. All right. Bojack Horseman. Yep. Uh, and, and this guy was watching the race, and then he heard, um, as Secretariat was winning, he heard, there's, there's going to be another when the other one comes, we'll like, whatever. He was the same voice. Well, it's going to be another horse. Well, I was horse will win a race. Yeah. So then uh, a few years later on, I think it was kind of when Donald Trump was making his rise, mm-hmm. a horse called American Pharaoh came along, blitz secretariat, went, won the Triple Crown. How yeah. many years later is this? Not sure. Didn't look at the timeline. So there have been literally thousands of horse races in between. (laughs) Secretariat is now an old horse. Yeah. Um, Oh, he didn't, like, he beat the time, won the, you know, kind of became the new new it horse. The Maccabi Diva to, what's the other one? Farlap. Farlap, yeah. Yeah. Um, So this prophecy is that one day there'll be a horse that is faster than this horse. Yes. Good prophecy. Uh, The lineage of that horse... Mm -hmm. Some of the names were of its parents and, and the kind of the tree yep. were like Empire of the Sun. Yep. God's key to the kingdom. Yeah. Also, almost as if there's a theme <laughs> running right. through them. If they, this is a quote. If what they, a coincidence that the child's name would be somehow related to the parents' <laughs> name. <laughs> Which is how they name all racehorses. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he's made a lot of prophecies. The other prophecy that he's um, really, he's really hanging his, his hat on at the moment is there's going to be um, the High Court judges. There's going to be three appointments. And it's going to... No, sorry, there's going to be five the things Supreme happen. Court? Yep, Supreme Court. Um, one's going to die, one's going to retire, which just makes sense because they're all so old. Yep. Uh, and then three are going to be taken down on a scandal. Oh. Since then, one has died. Scalia. Yep. Um, a lot of controversy about him. People think that he, he was, was bumped off. off yeah. Yep. 
<laughs> dude in his 80s with a history of heart problems. Yeah, probably yep. killed by Hillary. Yep, that's that is. She's, right. He's yep. on the Hillary Hillary uh, body count, and yet his death brought no benefit at all to that side of politics. No, um, but when he was watching the funeral uh, on on television, they were carrying Scalia up the steps, and as they get to the top of the steps, a train horn sounded in the distance. Oh. Uh, according to to Mark Taylor. He, he realised at the time that that was the Trump train. <laughs> That's the way God speaks to me. He said, yeah. um, this was on a Christian radio Three show. Trains. Listen Three out trains. to the Trump train. Yeah, yeah. That's the Trump train. Um, <laughs> you need to popularise Trump train. <laughs> well, that's a, what, that was already a thing, like right. when he was getting the momentum up. So that was kind of the... Get on the Trump train. He, he said that uh, based on that, it proves that God's got a good sense of humour as well. Right. Oh, yeah. Amongst all the, the wrath and the... Famously funny dude, yeah. Yeah. Didn't he flood the entire earth? <laughs> funny like that. So going back to his, his very first... Um, his very first prophecy. Yeah. He said at the time he didn't know much about Donald. He just knew he was a very powerful businessman. Yeah. <laughs> Not true, but there we go. Uh, and he went to his doctor, went to his doctor and spiritual advisor. Yep. And his wife. It sounds like it was a proper. All the same person, like the Holy Trinity? No, no. So the doctor's, doctor and his wife were there during this diagnosis. Is his doctor also the spiritual advisor, though? Yeah, yeah I think right. so, yeah. Right. But not his wife. No. Um, and he'd been suffering an illness that made him lethargic. I think he had PTSD from his, his firemaning. Uh, I know what he had. There you go. <laughs> uh, and he, he showed the, the prophecy that he'd made to the doctor's wife. And she said, as I read this prophecy, I saw the father's ry- rhythm throughout the whole prophecy. And I recognized the rhythm or frequency, you could call it, because God has his own frequency. I literally collapsed into a chair and said, Donald Trump is going to be our next president. Whoa. What's the, the frequency of this? Could have been, yeah. Um, Could I suggest if you go to the doctor and you're like, I'm fucked up from firefighting, I saw some shit. By the way, I reckon I can predict the future. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) Wouldn't a good doctor be like, all right, we need to get on top of that. Yeah. No. Rather than be like, yeah, I reckon you could. Maybe we should get my wife in. Yeah. <laughs> See what she has to think about it. Um, it's like, but I am your wife. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, I also watched some of him on um, Sheila Zielinski. Have you come across her before? Hmm. She's a very, very cooked radio presenter in the US. Um, in the past, she... Claims the Obamas uh, did exorcism, exorcisms in the White House. Yeah. Isn't that good? Uh, well, yeah, I guess so. Isn't it better than that, doing exorcisms than doing like whatever the opposite of an exorcism is, putting demons into things? Entricism. Yeah. It was, it was, <laughs> it's good. Um, it might have been, it was probably a Luciferian one, though. Probably was an inter- entricism. You can't exorcise someone's soul. Um. <sighs> She also said... I just want these people to stop for a second and think. She also said that uh, the Las Vegas massacre was a ritual for the pagans. Yeah, all right. A blood fine. sacrifice. So she when's the cooked stuff coming? Um, and then she had another guest on her show um, that claimed that Clinton, when she got in this time around, in 2016, was going to legalise bestiality and pedophilia. Mm. So this is the kind of content she, she regularly goes uh, with. Well, it's dodged. Good thing that bloody train <laughs> pulled into the station. Yeah. Yeah, um, we got this bloke who's famously not interested in very young girls at all. <laughs> yeah. um, on that show, this uh, Mark Taylor said, um, he was just talking about mainstream media and how bad it is and how we should be listening to, to proper media, like Sheila Zielinski. Yeah. Um, he said, stop listening to every Tom, Dick and Harry on YouTube. Pick your sources. Turn it off. Don't get, don't get any revelations, but get the revelations from God. Yeah. Or yeah. the song by Iron Maiden. Or the song by Iron Maiden. He didn't mention it, but I think he was he was talking about it. Yeah. Um, the, there's a real running theme through all these. Uh, the Roe v. Wade kept on coming up. Yep. Um, in all the interviews he did, uh, which is the uh, abortion decision. Yep. Which I think was more around privacy into people's lives rather than abortion itself. But um, it just kept on coming up and every time he talked about it. Roe v. Wade, and that's why I'm thinking he's talking about the, the 
Supreme Court. Yeah. Because that's when there's the controversy. Um, he also leans very far into Q territory. Mm. Um, he talks a lot about, and even now he's talking about, um, you know, the Obamas are going to be arrested, Clinton's going to be arrested, Soros is going to be locked up, um, the, the drain the swamp, the deep state, the Illuminati, they're all tied in. Um, and the Q people kind of picked him up, but not really. Um, the other thing he's predicted lately is, oh, he goes on about the sealed indictments. You know, there's this big thing in the Q world of like, all these sealed indictments are happy and are happening. It means that secretly everyone's being arrested. Mm. I actually looked them up, those sealed indictments, and it turns out the Q people and the people pushing that narrative are very much misrepresenting the situation. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're manipulating the statistics in very uh, underhanded ways to show what they want it to show. That's um, a shame. That's a shame, isn't it? I w- now, you've presented a sort of... A- Image of this guy is a bit of a, a fraudster. So I'm just making, I don't just making, know if I have, up. but maybe he's a little bit crazy. Yeah. Uh, I'd invite you to watch a Bombard's body language video of one of his interviews. I clicked on a Bombard's body language. I didn't watch it. What can you tell us about that? Well, if you just look at the way he raises his, eye, his eyebrows sometimes, or even just the way he opens his hands, this is the man who's telling the truth. Right. So Bombard's body language is the one that famously says, Everyone's lying if they're d- Democrat. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. If it had been Hillary Clinton raising an eyebrow or opening up her hands and be like, here she is pretending to be open. Yep. <laughs> uh, so you don't buy his body language? Her body language. Ladies can be body language grifters as well. No, right? I'm saying Mark Taylor's body language. Oh, no, I think that if you pause, uh, if you just watch a video and just pause it every time someone moves any part of their body mm. and try to analyse things from that, maybe you're not going to get the best result. Mm. No, that's probably good advice. Um, Sorry for accusing you of being a body language sexist. <laughs> it's okay. It's not the first time. <laughs> um, the other thing he's predicting at the moment is there's going to be, uh, he's also saying the Pope's really bad. Which again is, is really much in li- very much in line with Q, yeah. Uh, and the Pope is is a false prophet, not like this guy who's yeah, a who's a fireman, <laughs> complete genuine prophet. Uh, there's going to be an archaeological dig somewhere in Israel. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're going to uncover something that is going to lift the lid and just tear down and change the Catholic Church. Everyone's going to realize that the Catholic Church has been, and the Pope especially, has just been up to funny buggers. Yeah. I don't know if that sarcophagus in Egypt is related. Yeah. So the, the, they're going to uncover something that shows the Vatican's been up to no good. Yeah. Yeah. The Catholic Church <laughs> up to funny buggers. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Worse funny buggers. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Enough to tear them down. Emphasis on the buggers. Yeah. Not not that. Not all those endless run of sex scandals that. No. It's constantly happening around the world. Something or, serious. What could even tear them down? Like at, at this point. Well, didn't didn't one of the like main when all the Vatican bank stuff went down? Didn't one of the main Vatican bank guys end up hung from a bridge in London? Oh, really? Yeah, there's there was a lot of uh, silliness going on. Hmm, that was a bit silly. <laughs> when was that? What era was that? Uh, I was back in like the eighties or something. Oh, yeah. I don't know about that. We we may have to get back to that. We're gonna have to talk about P two and the mafia and the Vatican bank at some point. Oh, sounds good. But they didn't tear them down, did it? No, yeah. they they. they they have withstood a lot of stuff. Mm. I'm sure being massively rich probably helps. Yeah, yeah. Having just rooms full of gold. Yes, and also, buddy, the, the fees they charge you to go have a look at some of the gold. Queue up all day for that, and they sting you with a fee. Mm. And they take your beer off you if you've got a beer in your bag. Oh, Robert, you had a tough time at the Vatican, yeah. did you? I did, I did. Not as tough as some. Maybe, yeah. maybe Jesus will come back and be like, you guys... Get with the times. It's all about me, not the old man. Yeah, yeah. That's what they, that might be what they pull out of the sarcophagus. Jesus, yeah, you mentioned the one in Egypt. Well, it's the, like this one. Whatever is in this is going to be pretty impressive if it's going to beat the red soup. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the bright red soup, the, the bones and liquid. Yeah, drink it. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe maybe Jesus comes back, pops up when they dig him up, yeah. and says. Mark Taylor, right along. Yeah. What a classic and, prank that would be. What and a stitch he, up. And the, the prophet's like, oh, this is awesome. He's like, not you, cricketer. Yeah. <laughs> Bloody good one day international average, mate. <laughs> For a left hander. 
Well, if people want to find us. <laughs> yeah, anything else on, on that? Nah. So, let's wrap that up then. Uh, if people want to find us, twitter.com slash hypothepod. Uh, you've been, I think, posting some good Alex Jones stuff. Yes, yeah, so if you want to hear more talk about Alex Jones. Check out our Patreon. Yeah, which we'll talk about that in a sec. But yeah, there's been uh, kind of wrapping it up, but I've been re-watching Alex Jones again, but we'll talk about that more later on. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, you can find us on iTunes, we're on Stitcher, and we are, of course, on Spotify. Mm-hmm. You can get me at Ale of a Time, aleofatime.com, and my book is out in all good bookstores now called Keg Bottle Can, and it's a good read. And if they don't have it, ask them to order it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. even if you don't want it. Yeah. You just be like, oh, have you got this book? Yeah, if yeah. they don't have it, get them to order it in, and when it comes in, say, oh, someone gave it to me as a gift, and yeah. they'll put it on the shelf. yeah. You're helping restock yep. when they're too lazy to. Even if you don't want to like go through the shroud of pretending to order it, you like stand around and be like, oh, have you heard about that book, Keg Bottle Can? Oh, yeah, I have heard about that one. <laughs> yeah. Put on disguises and keep going back in. The, the shame is, though, people who go buy it at the bookstore don't get a delicious cookie. Yeah. Like we got at the book launch. Yeah. That deal's done. Yeah. Oh, maybe it'll come back. Yeah. Depending. Anyway. So uh, you can find me at Saltmarsh on Twitter, Andrew Saltmarsh Illustration on Facebook for my artwork and illustration stuff. Um, very soon I'm going to be opening up some commission spots for people if they want to get some artwork done by me. And check out Toe Hotter on Patreon after you've become a patron of this podcast. Mm-hmm. And you can find me at Sexenheimer on Twitter, gather around me on Facebook and iTunes for my other podcast. Thank you. Bye. Bye guys. Don't worry about a thing Except if all our world leaders are alien reptilians I said don't worry about a thing Except maybe the fluoride in our water supply contains mind-altering drugs Don't worry about a thing Except whether or not Port Arthur was a false flag operation in which to disarm Australia. I said, don't worry about a thing. I accept. You can definitely hear John Lennon say, I buried Paul at the end of Strawberry Fields forever. Ooh, don't worry about a thing. Except not only did Bush do 9 11, but he also keeps the planes out in Area 51, which. Let's not forget where all the aliens are. Don't worry about a thing. Except Donald Trump is clear.